It's been narrated in the stories of hadith that our messenger Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi said that one day Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, he stood amongst Bani Israel and he gave them a sermon that was so powerful, so moving uh, that their hearts shook in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their eyes teared up. And one man amongst the crowd who listened to what uh, Sayyidina Musa was saying to them, he stands up and he asks Prophet Moses a question. He says, O oh, Prophet of God, who is the most knowledgeable person in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most? Now, our Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, being the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to directly, being the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used as a tool to save Bani Israel from Fir'aun, uh, being the one who throws his staff and it turns into a large serpent, he answers this question by saying, I am. Now at that exact moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to Sayyidina Musa through wahi, through revelation, and he says to him, No, Musa, you are not. There is a servant of mine that you will find at the meeting of the two oceans, Majma'ul Bahraini who is more knowledgeable than you. Now Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, upon hearing this from his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, he responds right away and says, Ya Allah, how do I find him? How do I benefit to, from him? Lead me to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go Moses, travel, and take with you provisions, take with you food. You're going to have a long travel. You're going to get tired. You're going to have to eat. And I want you to take with you a fish. And as you're traveling, when you lose that fish, that's the location that you will find my servant. And this is the story of the meeting of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam Allah with Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, a story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala galvanizes throughout history by mentioning it in Al-Quran al-Kareem in the story of Surah in the Surah of Surah Al-Kahf. Now, as we take adventures or take the adventure through the story, we're going to stop and ponder some of the lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn from this amazing narrative that he gives us. The first les lesson that we need to look at is the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sayyidina Musa, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected him right away. Now, the prophets of God, alayhim salam, may peace be upon them all, they were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify humanity, to purify us spiritually, intellectually, the way that we act, the way that we think, and that which we do. They were our guides to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi, when describing himself, he says, Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al akhlaq. That verily I was sent to perfect moral character. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi in the Quran al kareem and he says about him, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily you Muhammad are over vast, beautiful moral character. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us guides to guide us to the truth who were guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet salam collectively were the leaders of their nations in correcting their actions. If someone ever did something wrong in the presence of the Messenger of God sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, it was his duty alayhi salam in the most beautiful way to rectify that action because he was there alayhi salam for the upkeep and the enlightenment of humanity. Now, just as he or the prophets in general played that role with us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took on that role with them. So just as the prophets were our guides, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their guide. Just as the prophets were our murabbi, that they were our uh, individuals that taught us how to act in a proper way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their rabb. He was their murabbi. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi says this, he says, Rabbi, 
فأحسن تأديبي. What a beautiful, beautiful narration. And what an amazing reality that was. He said, My Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine, he taught me adab. He taught me etiquette, spiritual, intellectual, and everything involved. And how great and how perfect my etiquette is. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always wanted his prophets to be at the climax at the top of moral and spiritual etiquette. And so if any of their actions needed, and I say this with a heart that's filled with trepidation and fear, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from saying anything that is not uh, worthy of these great men of Allah azza wa jal, if their actions ever needed refinement from the divine, he subhanahu wa ta'ala would then refine them. And in this case of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, when he was asked that question, who is the most knowledgeable of Allah? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from him was that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam gives that back to Allah, waits for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer and tell him. But instead he says, Anna, I am. He ascribes something to himself. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to refine that in Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And he responds to him right away by saying no. And he puts him on this journey as a student in the presence of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salatu wa salam. As the great spiritual saint Ibn Ata'illah says in his Hikam, مَنَعَكَ أَن تَدَّعِيَ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ مِمَّا لِلْمَخْلُوقِينَ أَفَيُبِيحُ لَكَ أَن تَدَّعِيَ وَصْفَهُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ SubhanAllah, so, so beautiful. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us for, from claiming that which does not belong to us but belongs to other creatures. Meaning if someone has something or has a particular trait or has a particular quality that we don't have but they have, we can't claim that quality to ourselves. <laughs> so then would he permit you to claim his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he is the Lord of the worlds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to realize who we are and who he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants us to realize that we need to constantly be in a state of ubudiya, of servant servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ilm is with Allah. We have no ilm. It's all with him, subhanahu. So in the case of the prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to return everything back to him unless he already gave them permission to make the statements that they made. So you'll see our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, so often in his life, when asked a question, he wouldn't respond right away. He would wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the answer. Or there are times in his life where he would say uh, certain comments about some prophets and their greatness and their ranks, and then later he would tell us, Sallallahu uh, Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Ala Ali, about how his rank is greater than them. Because initially he never made any claim about himself until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala allowed him to make that claim by giving him that information. Humility. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants us all to be in a state of utter humility in front of him, Subhanahu. The second beautiful lesson that we take from the beginning of the story is Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam's response to receiving that information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in the Quranic narrative, when the angels are ordered to prostrate themselves to Sayyidina Adam, they all do except for Iblis, the Satan, the devil. And his logic that he uses is, Ana khayrun min. I'm better than him. You created me out of fire, and you created him out of clay. I'm not going to do what you are ordering me to do because in my skewed 
false logic, I'm better than him. But in the case of Sayyidina Musa السلام, we don't see that response whatsoever. Our Prophet Moses السلام, he teaches us a lesson in humble humility. Right away he says, Ya Allah, how do I find him? How do I learn from him? He السلام, once hearing from the divine that someone else had information that he didn't have, he wanted that information. He wanted to accompany that person. And he, in this case, was ready to travel and did a long distance to be able to be in the suhbah, the companionship of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salamullah. Another beautiful thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our attention to, another beautiful lesson in the beginning of the story, is when he talks about majma'ul bahrain, the meeting of the two oceans. The saintly spiritual scholars have said that the two oceans here are representing the ocean of a sharia and the ocean of haqiqa, the ocean of religious laws that they said that Musa, Musa السلام, represented, and the ocean of haqiqa, the reality of things as they truly are with Allah, and that is what Sayyidina Al Khadr represented. But those that had a very more nuanced look at this, they said in reality, Sayyidina Musa السلام, he was an ocean of sharia, of religious laws, and he was السلام, an ocean of haqiqa, of the realities. It's just that Sayyidina Al Khadr السلام, was swimming further in the depths of the ocean of haqiqa than Sayyidina Musa was. السلام. And so Moses, peace be upon him, he's traveling so he can learn more about the depths of that ocean that he's already in but has not gotten as far as Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam has. While Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam was not swimming in the ocean of sharia, of the ocean of religious laws. And so this is a meeting of these two amazing individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to learn so much from. Now as we move into the story of the meeting of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam with Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, it's important that we have some principles before we dive in. The story, if we look at it, really is a representation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine will, al-Qadr manifesting itself on earth, and humanity grappling with trying to understand why and how and for what purpose it's happening. Uh, Sayyidina Musa السلام, in the story, he's really representing you and I. He's representing an individual who is being exposed to divine action through the tool of Sayyidina al-Khadr and those things are transpiring to different individuals around him and he wants the hikmah, he wants the wisdom, and he wants to understand why is this going on. And very often that happens to us in life. Uh, we are subjugated to something, and we think it's the worst thing that possibly happened to us at that moment. And we even maybe question why it's happening to us in that moment. And then a little bit of time goes by, and then we realize, oh... That thing that happened that I didn't like, it actually brought to my life a lot of good. Or there's another case in which we don't want something and we try pushing it as hard as we can away from us and it happens anyway and we hate it, but then we realize so much good comes out of it. And this is based on the divine mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the divine knowledge and wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he tells us in Al-Quran al kareem وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ It may be that you hate something, but in reality, in its reality, it's good for you. And it may be that you love something, but in reality, it's no good for you. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ and God knows and you don't know. The nature of being a human being means that we are incomplete, that we are weak, 
we are short-sighted, we don't have complete knowledge. Uh, you know, we, we don't even have the ability from the physical sense to see behind us. If any one of us was to be asked to, to describe what's exactly behind you, we don't even have that ability, let alone to know what's good for us in life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So there are times that he will subjugate us to things that we don't fully understand. But if we're true believers and we're truly striving to please Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi, then those things are good for us. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a generous Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a wise Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a caring Lord. He tells us about himself, كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ With all of his power and all of his might and all of his ability to do with us whatever he wills, he still wrote upon himself mercy. So all of his exchanges with us are based on rahma, but that rahma, that mercy of Allah, manifests itself in the divine will the way that he wants, not the way that our limited understanding and computation wants. In the story of Moses, before we even get into his interaction with Al-Khadr, in the early days when Pharaoh was killing the, the children of Bani Israel, uh, the mother of Moses fears for him. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine mercy tell her to do? Throw him in the river, that raging river. As a human, as a mom, she didn't want to do it. She was afraid for her son, but she does it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens her heart and he lands in the palace of Pharaoh. Now, none of us would want to do that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah manifests itself in the ways that he knows is best for us. And his hikmah, his wisdom is all encompassing. So as we see Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam interacting with Sayyidina al-Khadr, we're going to see divine rahmah and divine wisdom and divine knowledge being manifested in story after story. And we see Sayyidina Musa as a human being in this case, trying to understand and compute what's going on and not being able to do so until the very end where Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam explains to him everything that happened. Sayyidina Musa is representing you and I, and Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam is representing the divine will and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're going to see throughout the story, uh, constantly a principle, as some of the ulama have said, إِذَا وَقَعَ al-qadr. That if decree manifests itself, if the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests itself, then eyes become blind. And that's a principle that happens all throughout the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and al-Khadr as we venture in this exchange of understanding the divine destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and decree that he's put on this earth. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us directly into the story when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and his young servant, who's known as Yusha alayhi salam, are traveling now to go meet Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam. And this takes place in Surah Al-Kahf, the chapter of the cave, the 18th chapter of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. And the story starts in the 60th verse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here tells us, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُبًا And remind them when Moses said to his sturdy young servant, I shall not turn from my quest until I reach where the two seas meet or I'll hold fast to my path for ages. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he's going, he's traveling, and he has a mission. He wants to meet Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, but he's not traveling as a teacher. He's traveling here in the state as a humble student. 
No, he's a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's been revealed to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's been sent to Bani Israel. He has an amazing station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet in this particular story, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is the student and he's seeking out the teacher. And he's telling his young servant that's with him how serious he is in this mission. That I will travel as long as I have to, or as far as I have to, until I get to meet Al-Khadr alayhi salamullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he tells us, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَا مَجْمَعَا Excuse me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَا مَجْمَعَ بَيْنِهِمَا نَسِيَا حُوتَهُمَا فَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ سَرَبَا And when they finally reach the point where the two seas meet, they forgot their fish and it made its way back into the water in an amazing way. The fish came back to life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him and it entered back into the ocean. Now the narrators tell us that this happened to the fish when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was sleeping and Yusha, his young servant, his companion that was with him, he witnessed this, but he doesn't tell Prophet Moses alayhi salam. He forgets to. So the next day they get up and they start traveling. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, as they're traveling and they're about a day's journey past where the two seas meet, he turns to his servant and he says, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran al-Kareem, فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَا قَالَ لِفَتَاهُ آتِنَا غَدَاءَنَا لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبًا And when they had passed further, as the narrators tell us about one day, he says to his assistant, his young boy, bring us our meal. Sayyidina Musa salam got hungry. He said, we've been certainly exhausted by today's journey. It's been a long trip. I'm hungry. I want to eat from that fish. Now Sayyidina Yusha, at this point, he remembers what happened to the fish. And he remembers that he didn't tell Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam what happened. And Allah narrates that in the Quran. He says, قَالَ أَرَأَيْتَ إِذْ أَوَيْنَا إِلَى السَّخْرَةِ فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتِ وَمَا أَنْسَانِيَهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ وَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ عَجَبًا Sayyidina Yusha says to Sayyidina Musa, he goes, do you remember when we rested by that rock? I forgot the fish. I forgot to tell you what happened to the fish. And no one made me forget except for the shaytan. And the fish made its way back into the ocean miraculously. Now, you have to imagine. Imagine you and I were traveling with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and we're on this trip with him. And we witness this miracle while Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, is sleeping. That the fish that we have comes back to life and goes into the ocean. You would think that the first thing that we would do would be waking up Prophet Moses السلام, and telling him what we witnessed or what we just saw. But in this case, Yusha, his servant, didn't do it. Why? How could that be? إِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَدَرُ عَمِيَ الْبَصَرُ When the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifested, eyes go blind, eyes are blinded. It was within the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Yusha alayhi salam, the young servant of Sayyidina Musa, forgets and is not reminded until they travel one day later. And there's good in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts khair in it. And this happens to us in life in mundane matters. And it happens to us in life in big things. I mean, a simple case and scenario is, you know, sometimes uh, my wife will tell me to go to the store and, you know, go buy salt or go buy a particular item. And I go to the store and I come back with everything in the store except for the one item that she asked me to get. And she'll ask me, where's the thing I asked you? And I say, oh, subhanAllah, I completely forgot. And she'll say to me, well, I sent you just for that. How could you forget? And I say, subhanAllah, I don't know. I don't know. But what we do know is that there is good in it. 
that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us his ultimate power and ability over us, even if we set out with jid, with seriousness and with direction to do something and accomplish something, we may not accomplish it. We may even forget to accomplish it. This is the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's Allah. And we are al-insan, nisyan. We are human beings who by our nature, we forget. Now, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam's response to Sayyidina Yusha when he tells him this is amazing, it's incredible. He could have got angry with him. Like he could have turned to him and said, what do you mean you, you forgot to tell me? How could you forget to tell me? You witnessed a fish that we've been eating from come back to life and go into the sea and you know I've been waiting for that sign and you didn't tell me? He could have gotten really mad. But he, alayhi salam, he didn't. And his response is encapsulated in Al-Quran Al-Kareem where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, قَالَ ذَٰلِكَ مَا كُنَّا نَبْغْ فَارْتَدَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمَا قَصَصًا Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam says, Ah, that's exactly what we've been waiting for. And they return going back on their footsteps, going back the direction that they came from. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is traveling as a student of the divine subhana. And he's traveling in a state in which his heart and mind are fine-tuned to receive the messages of Allah at every moment. He's not in a state in which he's seeing worldly actions as just worldly actions. He's seeing al-muharrik. He's seeing the one who is moving everything around him. And so he knows that Yusha, his servant boy's forgetting, was ultimately the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the destiny of Allah. So he's not rejecting it. And so he submits to it. And so as human beings, when things happen in our life, we have to be in a state of complete ubudiyah to Allah. We have to be in a state of complete humility and servitude to Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjects us to something that is completely out of our control, what we need to ensure that we do is we take a maqam, a station of complete servitude to Allah. We're weak. We have nothing. I'm going to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me strength through whatever it is I'm going through. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala through his kindness and generosity he gives us that strength. So Moses, peace be upon him, was seeing through this lens and he turns back to go to the meeting of the two oceans. And now Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and his servant Yusha are traveling back and the meeting happens. Allahu Akbar. The man that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam set out to go learn from is now there in front of him. And you can only imagine uh, that scene uh, unveiling itself in front of you, what your emotions must have been like, Ya yeah, Sayyidina Musa, what you must have been feeling to know that you are finally connected with the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed you has more knowledge than you. Even as I'm saying this, my heart is trembling just imagining this scene of these two spiritual giants beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meeting each other. Or to be to have been Sayyidina Yusha, to have been the servant boy of Moses, peace be upon him, at the time, just to witness these two oceans coming together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our hearts to receive from them everything that we can, Ya Rabbi Ya Kareem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He paints this picture for us in Al Quran Al Kareem when they come together. And He says, فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا Allahu Akbar. That Moses and Yusha, فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا Allah, 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 and they found a great servant of our own servants whom we had bestowed mighty mercy of prophethood from us 
and had taught unimaginable inner knowledge from our very self. Wajada Moses and Yusha Abdam min Ibadina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam the ultimate title, the ultimate expression of humanistic freedom. He's a abd, he's a servant, he's a slave. But not a slave to himself, not a slave to the material world, not a slave to any other human being. He's a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a servant of Allah. And through that servitude to Allah, the human being truly finds freedom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi throughout the Quran as his abd. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi. All praise be to the one who has revealed to his servant maqam al the pinnacle form of the human being in which we become freed from every desire and everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our hearts are just filled with his beauty and his majesty. We act, we be, we think, we look, we eat, we walk, we sit, we stand only for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're a abd of Allah, a servant of Allah and not a servant of anything other than Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he describes Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, فَوَجَدَ عَبَدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا They came across a servant of our servants. أَتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا We gave him mercy from us, being bestowed with divine mercy. There's been amongst the great scholars of Islam uh, many in-depth conversations as to what does this mean and who was Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam and what was the nature of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam. Was he a prophet? Was he a wali min awliya illahi subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or what was he? Many of them have gone to say that he alayhi salam was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nabi min anbiya illahi azza wa jal but he wasn't a prophet that was sent to a group of people to inform them of Allah he wasn't revealed to with a text but he was a nabi min anbiya illahi subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, many have gone to this opinion the likes of imam al-jazuli rahmatullahi alayhi if someone reads uh, often from his dala al-khayrat you're going to find that uh, Imam al-Jazuli often uh, remembers the name of uh, Sayyidina al-Khadr amongst the other prophets as do many of the other scholars of Islam. So they say that he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he doesn't stop there subhanahu when describing Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam. وَأَتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا We taught him from al-ilm al-ladunni. Now the nature of knowledge uh, the nature of how a human being receives knowledge is that uh, we go to school, uh, we go to other individuals who are educated in a matter, and they help educate us. Either that process can take years, or depending on what we're learning, uh, it could take months. But the point is that we have to exert effort to be able to learn any particular thing that we want to learn. But here in the case of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him directly without him having to search out that knowledge. It was bestowed directly to his heart by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our messenger Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi taught us that the ummah of the Prophet, the ummah of Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salam, because of our connection, to our amazing messenger, the greatest of all messengers, the greatest of all creation, we can take a part of this as well. When he says in a hadith, "Man amila bima alima, awrathahu Allahu ilma ma lam yalam." Whomsoever acts in according to what they know, we all learn different types of knowledge. But if we actually act in that knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the inheritance of 
knowledge that we don't know. Meaning, if we act on what little we know of good, of what Allah and His Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi have taught us to do, that if we actually put that into action, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of that, will cause us to know that which we don't know. He'll give us knowledge within our hearts and within our minds that is opened up based on the fact that we are practitioners of the knowledge that we have. So in the case of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, he did not have to seek out knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala injected it directly into him. And now the meeting takes place. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam goes to Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam and he says to him, قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِي مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْدَىٰ Moses said, so shall I faithfully follow you that you teach me of the tremendous guidance that you have been taught yourself. Sayyidina Musa السلام, is going up to Sayyidina Al-Khadr السلام, as a student with complete humility and humbleness. He's not seeing him and saying, look, I'm going to follow you around so you can teach me some things or come on, let's get this over with. Let's go. No, he's coming up to him knowing the station that Sayyidina Al-Khadr has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that Moses, peace be upon him, needs to benefit from him. So he's going up to him with a state of humility. Even his question, can I, may I? It's a question filled with adab, with spiritual and intellectual etiquette. Remember Moses alayhi salam, if there was anyone that could be proud and have arrogance over anything that he has in life, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam would be that individual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke directly to him, but it humbles his heart. It doesn't make him walk around with his chest puffed out so everyone recognizes him for the sake of his own self as being greater than other people. No, he walks with humility. And our Messenger was always like that to the extent that an Arab Bedouin would come and see the Messenger of God in a circle of individuals and he would not know which one of them was the Messenger of God. At-tawadu'a, at-tawadu'a, humility, humility. If we are teachers and we allow the knowledge that we've learned to make us intoxicated with our arrogance, thinking that we're better than other people, then that knowledge is going to drive us to the worst of places, Jahannam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that as of the three first people that will enter hellfire. One of them, the shaheed, who says, Ya Allah, I died in your way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you've lied. You died so that everyone would call you a shaheed. Or the scholar, Oh Allah, I learned knowledge and I taught it, Ya Allah, for your sake. And Allah says, you lied. You're a liar. You did it and you taught it, and you learned it just so people would praise you. And so we have to be really careful. Knowledge is learned not to teach. Knowledge is learned to practice. And if Allah then subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in a station in which he allows us to share that knowledge with other people in a companionship format, then that's from his great bounty upon us. It should make us even more humble. But to walk around with arrogance because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me a gift of something of knowledge that maybe someone else doesn't have means that I'm not truly entitled for what I'm carrying. And here Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is teaching us a lesson as to how we carry knowledge and how we carry gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. We need to be humble. And he humbly goes up to Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam as a student goes to a teacher 
asking him for permission to spend time in his companionship. Now, Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, he knows the nature of Sayyidina Musa. He knows who he is. He knows that he's a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also knows uh, some of the characteristics of Moses, peace be upon him, that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he doesn't mince words either. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam has a very strong personality. And Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam also knows that what Moses is going to experience is going to be very difficult upon him so he responds right away and he says Qala innaka lan sabara. he says verily moses you will never be able to have any patience with me and he says and how could you bear with me patience as to what you're going to see is beyond your experience how can you be patient with what you're going to experience, Ya Musa, when what you're going to experience is outside the pale and the realm of your knowledge. He's preparing him. What you're going to see and what I'm going to do and what you're going to witness is going to jar you. Remember, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam here, he represents humanity. And Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam, he's a representative of Al-Qadr, the divine destiny and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifesting itself on earth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's destiny and his Qadr, his will manifests itself on this earth, sometimes we do not understand, sometimes we don't comprehend, and sometimes there's a part of us that wants to reject it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions are based on rahmah, are based on mercy, they're based on hikmah, they're based on wisdom, and they're based on ilm, on knowledge, all-encompassing mercy, all-encompassing wisdom, and all-encompassing knowledge. And upon hearing this, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam responds. He says, Qala satajiduni insha Allahu sabiran wa la a'asi laka amra. He said, Verily, you shall find me, Allah willing, patient, and I will not disobey you in a single order. Now there's an exchange between Sayyidina al Khadr alayhi salam and Sayyidina Musa. Sayyidina al-Khadr is telling him, you're not going to be able to handle this. And Sayyidina Musa, right away, he divorces his, himself from the equation. He says, Satajiduni, you're going to find me, insha Allah, if Allah wills, patient. And I won't disobey anything you say or do. I'm, I'm going along for the ride. For Sayyidina al-Khadr, upon hearing that from Moses, he responds to him, he says, قَالَ فَإِنِ اتَّبَعْتَنِي فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِي عَنْ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى أُحْدِثَ لَكَ مِنْهُ ذِكْرَى Now this is the, the social contract between the two of them. You want to follow me? Fine. You want to have companionship with me? Fine. He said, then if you follow me, ask me of nothing before I first mention it to you. No matter what you see, no matter what you experience, don't ask. Don't say anything. Just be. Just experience as you, Ya Musa, or you, Ya human being, O humanity, you are going to experience the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifesting itself in front of you. And your role is not to reject it. Your role is not to question it. Your role is not to push back against it. Your role is to submit to it and know that the Lord is our, the Lord. Ar-Rabbu Rabb wal Abdu Abd. And the servant is the servant. And that the Lord does things out of infinite power, wisdom, might, and mercy that benefits the servant at times and places and spaces that only he subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And the reality of that is shown to us either in this world or in the next. And during their exchange with each other, as the hadith narrates to us, 
that Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam, he says to Moses alayhi salam, he says to Sayyidina Musa, Verily Moses, I am on knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me that he has not taught you. And you, Ya Musa, you, O Moses, are on knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you that he has not taught me. The oceans are coming together, the oceans of a sharia and the oceans of al haqiqah And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to take us through their story and they set off to, together. فَانْطَلَقَا حَتَّى إِذَا رَكِبَا فِي السَّفِينَةِ خَرَقَهَا قَالَ أَخَرَقْتَهَا لِتُغْرِقَ أَهْلَهَا لَقَدَ جِئْتَ شَيْئًا إِمْرًا and the story happens that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam Allah wal Khadr alayhi salam get to a port in which they get onto a ship. And as the narrators tell us in the tafasir, it was owned by a certain group of individuals that will enter into that inshallah in just a bit, who, know, who knew Sayyidina al Khadr alayhi salam. So they took Moses and al Khadr alayhi salam onto the ship without making them pay any money because they knew Sayyidina al-Khadr is an honest, good, pious human being. And as they're on that boat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends for them a bird, and the bird is on the side of the boat, and he's dipping uh, his beak into the ocean and drinking water. And Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, he looks to Moses and he says to him, O oh Moses, the knowledge that I have and the knowledge that you have is like the amount of water on the beak of the bird compared to the vast ocean of the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal. Meaning what the water that he has that he's taking out of the ocean is nothing. So if you were to combine my knowledge, O Moses, and your knowledge compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's nothing. We have nothing. Allah is the source of all knowledge, a lesson that we continually want to learn in life. Now they're on the boat, and what happens is that uh, Moses, as Allah tells us in the Quran, so they set out and they boarded a ship, and Al Khadr makes a hole in the ship. And Sayyidina Musa السلام, right away gets angry and protests. Have you done this to drown everyone on the ship? You've done a terrible thing. So already, at the beginning of the story, he's responding and breaking the contract that he had with Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam. And Sayyidina Al-Khadr responds to him, قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعَيَ صَبْرًا He replies to Moses, says, Didn't I tell you that you cannot have patience with me? Didn't I say that you would never be patient with me? And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he replies to him, he says, قَالَ لَا تُآخِذْنِي بِمَا نَسِيتُ وَلَا تُرْهِقْنِي مِنْ أَمْرِي عسرا. He said, take me not to task for having forgotten, no burden me, nor burden me in this following of you with an unbearable hardship. Go easy on me, go light on me, I forgot. Now, how did he forget? We would have to ask this question. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Ala Ali told us that Moses forgot. Now he just set out on this long voyage to meet Sayyidina Al-Khadr Alayhi Salam and they're together and they make a deal that if I'm going to travel with you and be with you, I promise you I won't ask you anything. And then right away something happens and right away Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salam starts to protest. He forgot. How? إِذَا وَقَعَ القدر عمي البصر. When destiny and the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unfolds itself, eyes go blind. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines to happen in every time and every place will happen no matter what resolve you and I have trying to stop it from happening. In the story of Musa and Al-Khadr we're going to see Sayyidina Musa being the representative of humanity cannot comprehend what's happening here. There's a boat filled with people 
and you are digging a hole in it that we're all going to sink and die, not even about us, about the other people in the boat, you're going to kill them, why would you harm other people? And so there are times in life in which we see things happening that we perceive are a harm to others, but as we'll see at the end of the story, our understanding, our vision is very limited. The vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. And the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. And here Moses alayhi salam teaches us also a lesson. It's actually, you know, when he says to Sayyidina al-Khadr, don't be hard on me. Don't be hard. <laughs> you know, like, take it easy with me. And so if we are ever in positions of being teachers like Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, we have to be gentle. We have to be gentle with our students. We have to be gentle with those that have come to learn. We have to be gentle with those that are around us. And so Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is putting this plea out there, but that plea is really a reminder to all of us that we're if ever in the position where we are the students and we have these, excuse me, where we are the teachers and we have these students around us, be gentle and kind in all of your interactions with them. And that's how Sidna Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi always was. He would describe himself as being a parent. I am to you like a parent. I teach you. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi, the perfected state of our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, who Allah ordered us to follow and be like, we always see him dealing with everyone with utter gentleness and kindness and humility sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi. The community of believers in al-Madina al-Munawwara always flocked to be around him. They always wanted to sit with him alayhi salatu wasalam. They always wanted to stare, with him, stare at him alayhi salatu wasalam. They always wanted to be in his beautiful presence sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi because he engendered that beautiful uh, experiential rahmah for everyone around them. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, O Muhammad السلام, except as a source of mercy to all the universes. And so we have to be Muhammadan السلام, in our interactions with everyone around us and with everything around us. So we make things easy. The Prophet السلام, told us, Make things easy. Don't make them difficult. If people forget things, if something happens in your house, your child does something that was silly, uh, don't go tough. Go easy. Learn. Let them learn in a gentle and a beautiful fashion. And now the adventure of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and al-Khadr alayhi salam continues. And now the second event is a very challenging event. And before I share it, just imagine... Uh, being Moses alayhi salam and now having uh, first being exposed to the difficulty of uh, Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam poking that major hole in a boat that would have drowned all the inhabitants of the ship and now he's about to experience something that is even more difficult in his eyes than the first and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts us uh, recounts the story for us in the Quran al-Kareem where he says fan حتى إذا لقي غلاما فقتله قال أقتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا سبحان الله So they set off until when they met a boy and Al-Khadr slew him, he killed him Moses responds, have you taken an innocent life for other than taking a life? You truly have done something heinous I can imagine Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam uh, witnessing uh, what he perceives in front of him of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam murdering a child, not an adult, uh, not a teenager. As according to the tafsir tell us, a boy that was around a very young age of five to seven. Uh, it's a jarring event to witness. And Sayyidina Musa, who's about justice, and standing up for truth and standing up for those that are impoverished and don't have a voice of their own as he did for Bani Israel 
is now being exposed to this divine action unveiling in front of him and just like the first time but even stronger he can't hold himself he responds and this time he didn't forget he just couldn't bear witnessing what he saw and Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam replies to him and he says Qala alam aqul laka innaka lan tastati'a ma'ya sabara he said didn't I tell you that you could have never you could never have been patient with me alam aqul laka you he's stressing here didn't I tell you that you can't be patient with what I have? You're going to experience and see things, Moses, that when you see them happening, they are beyond the realm of the ocean that you swim in. This is very deep and very moving. And Sayyidina Musa, alayhi salam, he responds, قال فإن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا. Now Musa عليه السلام knows that he's ordered to be in the company of Sayyidina al Khadr عليه السلام by Allah, and so he's trying his best. He knows that he's learning lessons. He knows that Sayyidina al Khadr عليه السلام has علم that Moses does not have. So he's trying to force himself to be patient in this journey as it's unraveling itself in front of his very own eyes. So he says to him, Moses says to Al-Khadr, if I ask you about anything more, then keep my company no further. You have attained from me complete excuse. Meaning that's it. If I ask you one more time about anything that you do, uh, it's the end of the road between us. And so they set off and they continue in their journey. They continue, they continue and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us now to the third event that transpires with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khadr alayhi salam. فَانْطَلَقَا And they continue traveling together. حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَيَا أَهْلَ قَرْيَةٍ إِسْتَطْعَمَا أَهْلَهَا فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجد فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال له قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا سبحان الله. So they moved on, they continued on until they came to the people of a town. They came across a town, and Sayyidina Musa والخضر عليه السلام they asked them for food, but the people refused to give them any hospitality. Now, it was the tradition that if travelers came across a town and they asked someone in the town to uh, cook them a meal or give them some shelter, a place to stay, rest and sleep in, that the people would do that. But the people of this particular town refused to do so, which is a terrible quality. It's a terrible trait. It's not a good sign. It's a place that typically you would want to get out of. But what happens... Allah tells us, there they found a wall ready to collapse. There was a wall and it was about to collapse. So uh, Al-Khadr salam, he fixes it. He sets it upright. And Sayyidina Musa says to him, if you wanted, you could have demanded a fee for this. Meaning justice or the exchange uh, between human beings indicates to us that if you do one thing for them like this, they should have paid you for it. Uh, especially given the fact that we asked them for food and we asked them for shelter and they refused. So why are you doing good for a people who don't deserve it? But uh-oh, this was the third time that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam responds to Al-Khadr when he was supposed to keep silent. And Allah tells us, قَالَ هَذَا فِرَاقُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنِكَ سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَأْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صبرا. Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam is saying to Moses, he said, this is the parting of our ways, this is the end of the road. I'm going to explain to you what you could not bear patiently. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, he says, may Allah have mercy on my brother Moses if he was patient, we would have learned many, many more lessons. 
and some of the narrations tell us that Al Khadr alayhi salam had prepared 1,000 events for Moses to learn from. But Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam could only get to three. And so at this point, Sayyidina Al Khadr alayhi salam is going to explain to Moses the divine wisdom behind all of the actions that he took and all of the things that he did that shocked Moses alayhi salam. So now Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam is explaining to Musa alayhi salam why he did what he did. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran al-Kareem, أَمَّا السَّفِينَةُ فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَعِيبَهَا وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا SubhanAllah, the divine wisdom, the divine hikmah as to why Al-Khadr alayhi salam put a hole into the boat. He says, as for the boat, it belonged to helpless unfortunates working at sea. So I wanted to flaw it beyond use while beyond them unbeknownst was a king seizing every boat wrongfully by force. And as the narrations tell us, that there were 10 siblings who owned this boat and they would share the wages that they got by taking passengers on this boat and they lived from the wages that came to them. And so there was a king who seemed to be like a pirate king that was seizing all of the boats and if he did so, if he took their boats, then their livelihood would have gone from them. So Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam being informed this by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to... Uh, poke this hole in a boat and you know uh, cause some damage so that that king wouldn't take their boat. So what was perceived at the moment uh, as destruction by Musa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Musa, what was perceived by Sayyidina Musa as a harm to material goods and to collective life was in reality a rahmah. It was just a small lapse in time in which Sayyidina Al-Khadr salam was protecting lives and protecting livelihood by causing momentary damage in the boat. And so he knew what was around the corner. Sayyidina Musa salam didn't. And so in this case, this can happen to us in so many ways in life. Uh, sometimes something happens to our cars, we get into a car accident. And we say, oh my goodness, I can't believe uh, that happened. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality is protecting us from a harm. Or maybe uh, you're trying to catch a plane or a train and you're late and you miss out and you put everything you left on time, everything was set to go, but there was traffic. And by the time you got there, the plane had taken off and you said, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. And you feel so bad about it. But Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting you from harm by not being in that place, in that space. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah is vast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ilm, his knowledge is all-encompassing. When things like that happen, or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjects us to his divine decree, so long as our hearts and minds are moving towards him and we're trying to act in the beautiful way that the Prophet ﷺ taught us, it is all khair. And now Sayyidina Al-Khadr ﷺ, he moves into the second scenario, the second story, the more jarring of the three to many of the readers and to Sayyidina Musa. He says, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِينَ أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا فَأَرَدْنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا مِّنْهُ زَكَاةً وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمًا SubhanAllah As for the boy, his parents were believers and we, and we, well, and we well feared that he would compel them to enormity and unbelief. So we wanted their Lord to send them better than he in purity and innocence, and tendered them in mercy. Sayyidina al-Khadr he kills this young boy, 
that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Al-Quran Al-Kareem tells us, had that young boy grown up, he would have grown up not just as a disbeliever, but he would have grown up to be a tyrant. He would have uh, grown up to be a, a Thanos-like uh, character in human history that wouldn't just harm others, but he would harm his parents. And that their future with this child would cause them into, to enter into disbelief would cause them to enter into kufr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he would rob them of this world and he would rob them of Jannah in the Akhirah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to protect them from that. So the boy was killed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his place, as the narrations tell us, gave them a daughter, a girl, and as many of the Mufassirin tell us, that she ended up marrying a prophet of God and through her came other prophets. Her children became prophets. So in this case in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took uh, this life, he took it for a hikmah, a divine wisdom and a divine will. And sometimes again, the loss of life may happen and we don't fully understand why. But the picture is complete with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this case, if this child had grown up, he would have been a child that would have harmed other individuals and he would have harmed his parents and robbed them of their faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted better for them than that, so he protected them from that reality. And he moves to explain now to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam the third. أَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً مِّنْ رَبِّكْ وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي ذَٰلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبَرًا and he says, as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city, and beneath it was a treasure trove that was theirs, and their father had been righteous. So your Lord wanted them to reach their full strength of manhood and then bring forth their treasure as a mercy from your Lord, nor did I do any of it from my own command. That was the significance of that which you could have no patience with. Sayyidina al-Khadr is explaining to Sayyidina Musa that when he put up that wall, he put up that wall because there was a treasure that was under that wall. And the father, and in some narrations they say the grandfather, of these children was a man of righteousness who had died. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to ensure that these children receive that treasure and no one takes it from them. So the beautiful lesson brought here to us is our actions, what we do of good, it impacts our children and it impacts the future to come. If we are people of taqwa, if we are people trying to live God consciously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the blessings from our lives to seep into our children and even into our grandchildren. It doesn't just end with us. And so here in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two prophets to ensure that this righteous man's children get the treasures that are entitled to them. And at this point, the meeting of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam ends with Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam and they both part ways. The great Quranic commentator and scholar, Sheikh Ahmed ibn Ajiba, rahmatullahi alayhi, he states that when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was leaving the company of Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, he asked him for some parting words of advice. And he narrates the following. He narrates that Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam says to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, لا تطلب العلم لتحدث به واطلبه لتعمل به. Sayyidina al-Khadr says to Moses, don't seek knowledge just so you can speak about it. Seek knowledge so you can act 
upon it. And he tells him, اجعل همتك في معادك Make your concerns, your return to Allah Azza wa Jal. ولا تخذ فيما لا يعنيك And don't busy yourself with that which is not your concern. ولا تمشي في غير حاجة Don't walk except with purpose. ولا تضحك And don't laugh too much من غير عجب without amazement. ولا تعير أحدا بخطيئة بعد الندم And never insult or blame someone for a sin or a mistake that they've made after they've truly felt sorry for it. وَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِيئَتِكَ يَبْنَ عِمْرَانِ And cry over your own sins, O son of Imran. وَإِيَّاكَ وَالْإِعْجَابَ بِنَفْسِكَ And be careful, be careful, be careful about being impressed with yourself. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, after hearing some of these advice, he tells him, you've given me great advice. And so Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam, he says to Moses, you give me some advice, O Prophet of Allah. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he says to him this, إِيَّاكَ وَالْغَضَبْ إِلَّا فِي اللَّهِ Beware of anger except if you're angry for Allah. وَلَا تَرْضَى عَنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا فِي اللَّهِ And don't be happy or impressed with anyone except for Allah. وَلَا تُحِبْ, ولا تحب لِدُنْيَا وَلَا تُبْغِضْ لِدُنْيَا Don't love out of worldly concerns and don't hate out of worldly concerns. فَإِنَّكَ تَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ وَتَدْخُلُ فِي الْكُفْرِ For if you do so, you will be taken out of faith and you will enter into disbelief. They part by giving each other beautiful, beautiful advice to make every concern and every action that we make or do in this world one that connects us to Allah alone. These three stories that we took from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this case are stories of divine destiny and divine will, Al-Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he does based on his all-encompassing knowledge, based on his all-encompassing wisdom, and based on his all-encompassing mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's better for us, and we submit ourselves to him, then by his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll show us the wisdom as to why he did and why he put us through what we went through. And that wisdom either comes out in this world or it comes out in the akhirah. And in the case of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, some of the great spiritual saints said that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam himself uh, had a connection to these three events that Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam put him through. For example, in the case of the ruining of the ship and the damaging of the ship but being protected from harm, Sayyidina Musa went through something similar to that in life when his mother threw him into the raging river and he landed at the shores of Fir'aun and grew up as a boy in his home. So just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the people of the ship from harm by having Sayyidina al-Khadr damage that ship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Sayyidina Musa from being killed by the Pharaoh army when he had him thrown in the river. Divine destiny taking care of him. And just like that young boy was killed by Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him, would give his family better than him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjugated Musa to something similar. As the Quran narrates when Moses alayhi salam killed a man in Egypt and he fled. But when he fled and left after that ordeal, it started him on the path of prophethood. Because shortly thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed himself to him. And just like Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam fixed the wall so that that family would be able to take the treasure without taking any money from them, something very similar happened in the life of Moses alayhi salam when he left 
Egypt and he was resting and he sees two women trying to get water from a well that's filled with men around it. And Sayyidina Musa السلام, stands and goes in on their behalf and takes water out for them. And then their father comes, who ends up being Sayyidina Shu'ib, according to many of the narrations, and he marries one of his daughters to Sayyidina Musa. Moses didn't take any uh, payment for taking water from the well, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a divine hikmah, divine hikmah and wisdom in Moses doing those actions. It's all connected in the realm of the divine. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjugates a believer to is good for us. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ It may be that we despise something, but it's good for us. And it may be that we love something and it's no good for us. Verily, Allah knows we don't know. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to submit holistically to his divine wisdom and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our hearts with beautiful iman and ihsan. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.